Hey, this is Mass X with a brand new Eminence and Shadow Master of Garden video. And we have our version 1.11.0.0 update. What did we get? Well, let's take a look. We got the Shadow Festival Summons, Imperfect Swordplay Alexia, who we'll talk about in a minute. Revival Shadow Festival Summons, 6th Member Zeta, very cool. We'll talk about that also. Premium Summon, Ideal Me Epsilon. Shadow Festival Summon Ticket Pack. Shadow Festival Summon Ticket Pack number 6. Anime Season 2 Celebration Equipment Pack. And new content, Shadow Base. Yes, new content, which we'll also be talking about. The Skip Until Done function has been added to Shadow Skip section. When skipping either Monster Hunt or Bandit Hunt in the Material Quest, you can transition to the other remaining quest. That's a nice addition. Uh, what else do we got? Seven Shadows Chronicles Part 2 Chapter 6 added. Yay! Player level cap is raised to 84. Yay! So let's talk about this. Probably first, though, let's take a closer look at what they are offering us right now. Well, first, let's look at the new content. Shadow Base is now live. Work together with Seven Shadows to develop the Shadow Base. Increase the number of members by improving food supplies and housing and collect materials to strengthen the facilities. Obtain magic candies and equipment through research and expeditions. So, what else? The facilities. You're probably getting an idea of what this is. Yes, it's kind of like having your own little town. Um, you have the hub. The other facilities cannot be made larger than the hub, so first you need to prioritize leveling this up. The dormitory. As the dormitory's level increases, the number of people that can live at the shadow base will increase. Unless you expand your dormitory, you can't increase the number of members working at each of your facilities. Stone Yard. As the Stone Yard's level increases, the number of members that can work there will increase. Increasing the number of members working at the Stone Yard will improve your stone harvesting rate. Factory. As the factory's level increases, the number of members that can work there will increase. The more members working at the factory, the better productivity will be and the more currency you will earn. The storehouse as the storehouse level increases you will be able to increase the number of members that go hunting with you. Increasing the num number of members that go hunting will increase the amount of food collected. Lumberyard. As the lumberyard's level increases the number of members that can work there will increase. Increase the number of members will improve your lumber production rate. Warehouse. As the warehouse's level increases the number of members that go on expeditions with you will increase. Increasing the number of members that can go on expeditions will increase the amount of equipment that you can bring back. And the laboratory. As the laboratory level increases, the number of members that can help out will increase. Increasing the number of members at the laboratory will increase the production of candy and magic drops. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. They also released this anime season 2 celebration equipment pack which basically will rank a character up to rank 8. You will have to purchase it though. I believe it's $29.99. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, it's cool if you spend because that's a, a quick level up for you. And, of course, with Shadow Festival in place, we now have one new limited edition character in Perfect Swordplay, Alexia, which we'll get into details for her. But basically, it's blue defense. And yeah, reduce damage received for all allies when partied with four blue elementals. So you know where this one's going when we talk about it. The strike combo though has a bonus effect that grants shield to all allies. But we'll get into the, some serious details of this character in a sec. So yes, out of the gate our newest character has arrived in Perfect Swordplay Alexia. Let's go ahead and look at this profile for this character. This character is a human Midgar uniform. No shocker there. And let's look at the awakening skills. At level 1, Glistening Blade inflicts 400% of skill user's defense damage on all enemies and lowers defense by 10% for 20 seconds. Also raises damage received by 10%, further reduces defense by 30%, and raises damage received by 30% if red elemental. Nice little kit, you know, for a blue centric team. Noble Mind raises own defense by 40% for 10 seconds, further grants ongoing HP recovery by 20% of defense for 15 seconds, inflicts provoke on all enemies for 15 seconds, nothing special there really. 
Then we've got Imperfect Sword Play. The Awakened Special Ability reduces damage received of all allies by 20% if party with four or more blue elemental allies, self-included. Permanent. That's nice. Further shields damage 400% of skill user's defense for 60 seconds if party with five or more blue elemental allies, self-included. So needless to say, this is a blue-centric character with out number four is your magic gear slot and number five the awakened hidden technique going beyond raises defense of all allies by 25 percent for 10 seconds inflicts 25 percent of skill users defense damage on a single enemy and recovers own hp by 400 percent of defense so yeah a solid blue tank that really is only going to have use on blue centric teams so that Kind of, you know, to me makes me go, mm. Definitely, in my opinion, unless you really use your blue centric team a lot, it's probably a pass. And this is the reason why. Because they have brought back sixth member Zeta for this Shadow Festival. And this is, if you don't know, one hell of a good character. She's a Thuranthrope. Shadow Garden, Slime Suit, Seven Shadows, and the abilities. The Awaken Special Ability, every 10 seconds after start of the wave, raises crit rate of allied characters by 10%. Permanent, further increases crit rate by 10% if green elemental. Yeah, that alone makes her freaking stellar, okay? Her Awaken Skill 1, Venom Storm, inflicts 5x poison, 4% of skill users attack on all enemies for 30 seconds, further inflicts 150% damage. Not too shabby there, huh? Then the Awaken Skill 2, Savage Overlord, inflicts 4 hit damage, 50% plus 50% plus 50% plus 200% on last enemy in line, and further inflicts sleep for 10 seconds. Number 4 is your Magic Gear Slot, and number 5, Brutal Finale, the Awaken Hidden Temp technique lowers crit defense of all enemies by 50% for 20 seconds further inflicts 1200% damage this character is great this character is amazing and if I was picking between the two I'd be working this banner if I didn't have this character um, this character does a lot of heavy lifting for your team and just is just an all-around stellar unit highly recommend getting that character if you don't have it now if you look at the top left hand corner you're going to see a new thing called shadow base and that's what we were talking about earlier so basically you can go into your shadow base and it's basically just going to be a means of farming kind of idle gameplay for you so to speak and as we go into it you'll see oh look at all the little presents i have and you're going to want to be collecting these and you're going to want to keep building these consecutively and it's just going to increase what you get from the game the key is really going to be that you're going to be wanting to level up all these different buildings to maximize so for instance the hub is your main spot so you're going to have to get your hub to level two first and then you can move everything else to level two and so on there are going to be certain requirements for everything and as you can see by going through here you can start getting things and they're going to increase and get better as you expand your little shadow base and make it stronger is it some amazing new gameplay no is it a way to get some more resources yes i'm all about that so i will take that any day of the week and just let things keep farming and you know as you can see i'm still looks like minus 60 on my lumber minus 60 on the stones and minus 298 on whatever that is i cannot remember what it's called um, to be able to get to level two, but that's going to be your focus. Just, you know, as you log in, make sure you're clearing these out each time and you go from there. And as you can see, you know, this won't be able to level up. You'll see the lock until you are at level two on your hub. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's not going to take a whole lot of your time or effort. But again, hey, free, give me three. But with that, that pretty wraps up this update. A nice little update to say the least. Um, I like what the devs have been doing with this game. They keep tweaking it, they keep, they keep adding things to it. And I'm very happy about where they've gone with this game. 
things are progressing well. We're coming close to anniversary and hopefully they'll have something special for us. And just don't forget, okay? You know, the banner rates are up. If you're free to play, this is the time when you want to pull. If you've been saving because not only do you have a higher chance to draw your SS characters, but also for building, you have your increased rate com campaign. Two times item drop count for your end chronicles. It has six days left. So make sure you are farming like a fiend. So with that, as always, please like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Have a great day.